Dole Bludger Resumes. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I want to have a look at this article from news.com.au a few days ago highlighting a radio host being outraged about some resumes from doll bludgers. Bom, bom, bom. Now, before we look at this, I want to draw your attention to a little chart from the ATO and make sure you grab your stein, guys. Because... You get a lot of flack about doll bludgers in Australia. The media loves going on about it. And frankly, we all hate bludgers. We all hate people sitting on their ass not working. Those who you know don't work shan't eat. There's a tradition to that. You know, there's some pride in working. Working is a privilege that you should have. You should work hard to actually get a job. And the idea of someone just sitting and bludging off others, well, it rubs a lot of people the wrong way. But doll bludgers aren't that big a problem as many people will be led to believe, particularly when you talk, look at the media. Now, this here is a clip from a video I did a couple of years ago, just looking at the breakup of my taxes, where I'm paying it. We, we get this every year, guys. And foreigners quite uh, enjoy seeing this because they would love to see this, where their tax money actually goes. Now, 40% of our money, our taxes, indeed goes on welfare. And you can see here... Unemployment benefits is right down the bottom after the aged care, so pension, then disability, then families. Then you've got the unemployment rate. So the lazy doll bludgers, which would only make up a small portion of this, is nothing compared to all of the other portions of the welfare system. So you have to appreciate it. if you want people to get pensions, if you want people to get disability, if you want family tax benefit, you're going to have to, well, accept there will be some people taking advantage of the system. Now, what my concern is you get stuck in the unfair poverty trap where the additional costs of going out there to work just don't warrant doing it. It's just not worth it. And what I want to do is, because uh, Labour and the Greens, they're proposing to increase uh, welfare, the Greens in particular, they're pushing for $88 welfare. So let's jump over here onto the the old screen and we'll do a bit of drawing here. Let me try to get this set up all day. And I want to talk about a supply and demand curve here. So let, let's see, we've got two axes on this curve here. Now this first axis that we have here, I'll just make sure stuff is going right. It's all working good. You can see me. Fantastic. You don't know how much of a pain it was to try and get this working. But anyway, you've got you've got your wages up here and you've got your labor here. Now, there's two curves on this chart. You've got your supply of labor here and you've got demand for labor here. So here's supply, here's demand. Now, normally in a functioning market, you'll reach an equilibrium point, which is here, which is the money people can earn equals a certain amount of labor. So let's say, I don't know, uh, fifth or $20 an hour or $10 an hour. And then you've got you know, 100 people working there. So this is an equilibrium, a market that, where it determines what's happening. Now, if, if say, for a circum, you know, an example, demand suddenly shifts. So the demand for labor shifts over. So you've got D, call it D2. If it shifts over, that means you'll have a new equilibrium, equilibrium point, okay, where the labor demand is, say, 110. And then all of a sudden, the wages have gone up by this amount. Okay, so we'll say it's, I don't know, 25. So this is where you get wage growth because it's demand-driven wage growth. Now, what? Well, what's not happening? We'll do a new chart here. Now, what happens is when the government intervenes in the market, when they intervene in the market, okay, you've got your two charts. Once again, guys, when they intervene, you've got demand. So here we have our supply demand, and we've got our equi equilibrium point. But you've got some people going, well, you know what? I, I'm not happy with this wage. I'm not happy with X wage. It's not enough for people. The market is doing it wrong. It's not fair people should be paid more they should be paid at this level up here okay so you're thinking fantastic everyone is getting x plus plus one dollars you know they're getting more money here and i should zoom can i zoom out no no oh is it fine 
You know what I mean? Now, what you think would happen is more, you know, that means more people were getting paid. But what, how the market adjusts is all of a sudden demand drops. Okay, that means the demand curve, it hasn't changed. It's still here. There hasn't been any extra demand, but now you have to pay this much money. So that means the number of people employed won't be, you know, D1, it will be D0. So it's this less than this. So it's this difference. So you have this group of people now that are unemployed because you legally have to pay this amount of money. So there's that many people here who now are unemployed. They can't get a job. Now the problem is, what if the people who are not worth X plus one dollars? What if they're only worth X dollars? Or what if they're worth, you know, Y dollars down here? Because they're an apprentice. They're really trying to get into the job. You can't hire them. They miss that opportunity. The rungs on the ladder to go up, you know, they're broken. They're kicked out. They can't get up to a better opportunity. And that's the problem when you have interventions in the market. Now, let's say, let's add another thing to it. Another, whoa, hang on, what's going on? Oh, yep, we don't want to save this. Let's go here and add, we'll make that a bit smaller. Here we have a, a, a curve. You've got, once again, your two curves and the equilibrium point here, everyone. Now, let's say we have welfare. Okay, we've got supply, we've got demand for labor, and there's an equilibrium point that's been set. And maybe we'll say, you know, the minimum wage is here. So the market in a particular industry is paying above the minimum wage. So that really doesn't matter. But what about if we have, you know, the doll here? So you've either got... You still have this benefit so you can still earn more money than the minimum wage now we'll say that's you know minimum x compared to the doll so long as that's enough of a difference to warrant you going out and working people will do it but let's say let's say we increase the doll to 88 dollars a day so it goes up to this level so now the gap between the doll and minimum wage significantly reduces and then all of a sudden all of a sudden the people that are earning you know the above market wage they start to realize why am i working why am i incurring all of this stress when i could just jump out of the employment market sit on the, the doll at this level and not have to go to work not have to deal with all that stress not have to deal with all those issues and then we also have another factor you've got foreigners from overseas providing services remotely that can completely adjust this entire curve because all of a sudden supply can really shift okay it can shift over to here because if now you can work with people online the market can work out at this level maybe even below the doll because you can work remotely, you can ignore the market rate for Australian labor, you can ignore the market rate for the minimum wage, and you can even ignore the welfare rate. You can offshore the work, or you can even automate the work. This is the problem of when you intervene in the market. Now, if people are advocate for, oh, we need to have tariffs for and we can't have this, we can't have that, what that'll mean is we will just then all be paying the cost for those tariffs. We're competing on a global world now, and all wages are going to start lifting up, and they'll all be... Well, they'll all reach a, a common equilibrium given time. But if we intervene in the market and incre increase the welfare rate, it's going to increase unemployment because people aren't stupid. They're going to maximize their, well, their uh, return for a minimum amount of time. So let's have a look at how Ben is getting frustrated at this. With this all in mind, because there will be some people calling for increases to the doll, and it's going to create a lot of, a lot of economic problems. So a radio host has exposed the outrageous resume submitted by doll bludgers who deliberately failed to find work and rorted the system. I mean, you're not talking that much money. It's not a luxurious life. I can't imagine anyone wants to do it. But, you know, they're probably going to be... Their resume... Here, here's the thing. If you've got a long enough gap in your employment, people are going to just think you're a troublemaker. So... Ben Fordham has lashed out at doll bludgers who are rorting the welfare system by deliberately failing to find work. The 2GB radio host and journalist told his listeners on Friday morning 
that he had obtained resumes submitted by Australians who were taking taxpayers for a ride. Submitted, some admitted the only reason they applied for jobs was to meet mutual obligation to keep receiving welfare payments. One person called Jack had a one-page resume that read, I've absolutely no skills whatsoever. I made it to 10th grade. Well, maybe that's all he has. Does that like, sound like someone who is keen to land a job? Or is Jack only applying for one so he can keep getting the doll, Fordham said. Yes, but what if he has no skills? Then he should be stepping up. It's kind of pathetic, really. We're not talking a lot of money here on the doll, guys. It's, I, I would argue it's an emergency payment that is there just to help the destitute so people can get by, people who haven't prepared with an emergency fund. You shouldn't trust or count on the government to take care of you. But maybe that's an old-fashioned idea. A second example was a woman named Alana, and it read, I'm currently employed with two cash jobs. I'm only applying for this position to complete my job plan with Centrelink. Apologies for any wasted time. I mean, will you report someone like that? Two cash jobs. Another from Karen read, I'm fulfilling my job seeker requirements by applying for this role. 2GB host said, Both sides of politics needed to address the growing number of people who refused to work. While he said most of those receiving payments did need them, there were still many that were able to work and simply chose not to. We've got 900,000 Australians on job seeker. It's costing taxpayers $27 billion a year, Fordham said. It's easy to rot the system. We are too soft. Is it? Well, I, frankly, I've got no idea. Is it easy to rot the system? Let me know in the comments. I've heard a lot of horrible things about the job network and the experience you have to deal with it. So I, I, I can appreciate how people will be disheartened. People have figured out how to play the system and you don't need a degree to figure that out. They're old gold doll bludgers. That's what we used to call them. We should still call them that now. Fordham said a man named Graham, whose job was to find employment for others, had so far reported more than 1,000 people to Centrelink. The journalist explained people who were accused of not meeting their obligations still receive payments. He said after receiving three strikes in six months, a person will be called in for an interview, but he said it would take five strikes and an assessment before Centrelink would cut their payments in half. And we wonder why 900,000 Australians are on the system, Fordham said. Well, let's, let's have a bit of a talk about this one, guys. It's a very contentious issue. It's a complex issue. And, well, can you see them cutting it? Maybe we should just abandon welfare, get rid of all of the Centrelink employees and staff, and put them all on a UBI. thousand bucks a month. Boom. There you go. Maybe that would be cheaper than the... Uh, than the $27 billion we pay. But then we wouldn't have all those people and all those jobs and all those welfare agencies doing work. Uh, you're always going to have some dead weight. Okay, there will always be some people who wrought the system. That's just the price you pay for having these safety nets in place. I think we need to look at opportunities. Fundamentally, my argument would be we need to look at opportunities to uh, encourage people to start businesses to employ Australians. We need to get rid of the impediments to actually creating jobs and opportunities here. Right now, what's our country set up for? It's set up for housing. It's all about housing. All investment is going in housing. Everyone's incentivized to go into housing. Housing is used by the government to prop up the economy. If you look at how, look at your return on your house, guys. Just look at it. See how much you made in the last few years and compare that to the pain in the ass of running a business. It, it doesn't stack up for a lot of people. You go, oh, yeah, there you go. Look at that. I doubled my money in my house. That did bugger all. Or, where, yeah, I could work in this stressful business dealing with these people, all of this stress, all of this risk. But the problem is taking on that risk, dealing with those people, dealing with that stress, that's what creates jobs and opportunities. And sure, you're going to have some bludgers like this. Maybe they're just going through a time in their life where they need to get their shit together and it'll take some time. Maybe they're just... You know, the stereotypical doll bludger that prides themselves on work in the system, but you're not going to have a very fulfilling existence doing that, I imagine. But we need to look at the broader big picture. And as I said, guys, there's many more people receiving welfare than the bludgers, and even those on welfare. What do you reckon? Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. Thank you all for watching this episode of Heiser Says. 
If you're a fan of the channel and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can help out. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon, sign up for Self Wealth or Stake, or use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve, or Aussie Broadband. Take care, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now. Writing a resume, you have no skills. That should be embarrassing. You could at least dig a hole, do some gardening, wash cars. I don't know.